Hari Tsawansen. I am Chief Namox John Ridsdale. I currently sit as the highest ranking chief of the Tayu, the beaver clan of the Wet'suwet'en Nation. Actually, the name giving, the process of the feasting of the names, the preparation of it, um, the way that they stand up, they make your song for that person, which describes who they are, where they come from, their history, their association with their house, their clan, and um, proof that this person is worthy. And then you go into the feasting system where everybody affirms that the person is worthy of that name. And also the gift giving, where it shows that person is willing to give everything to become who they are now. The feast system for us, depending on whether it's a funeral feast, a naming feast, um, say even a forgiveness feast, um, it's all about sharing, caring, making sure that people understand our laws, our processes. Like when we take on names, there are processes for each feast and for the name ones, protocols must be followed, S certain songs must be sung, certain people must speak on behalf, and most of our feasts enjoy uh, the fact that we have laughter in them. It's not all serious. Every human being has laughter in their life, and so we bring laughter and joy into our system. But it's big business at the same time. reaffirmation of territories okay. if there are well let's say government or industry or even some of our own people or another nation that come in and trespass we bring it to the feast hall we discuss it and we ask how to solve it we try not to be a punishing people but we have to be strict as well um, I call it being as soft as a rock sometimes you have to maintain your laws because your laws are what uphold your culture like we truly believe that the land is us and we are the land. We look after the land, the land will look after us. So we can't do something for our own personal benefit and hurt the land, the culture, the people. Strict law. Biggest law we have is wagus, respect. And for us that means you come from yourself, respect yourself, you'll respect the land, the people, the air, the water, everything around you. Wagus, without respect, where do you start without that? In our language, um, yinta, that's the territory, the land. How do we express ourselves to people who are not Wet'suwet'en? Like I stated, we're one and the same. Um, when we describe ourselves as Wet'suwet'en people, uh, we describe where we're from, not only our family, but our land, the territory, the relationship that we have with it, our responsibility to look after it because everything goes in cycles. If we look after something today, it'll be there for us tomorrow. Everything, whether it be plant, animal, insect, they all have cycles and it's our job to maintain those cycles. You disturb that, you disturb everything. It's like water flowing, it's continual, but if you don't look at the headwaters, that water flow will change. The way we do it is um, we have our elders bring out our youth and all the people. Uh, once you get feet on the ground, once you're drinking the water, once you're breathing the air, once you have that human contact with it, that's that connection. With us, we're so lucky that we know generation after generation who the people are, where, what territory they belong to, who's their father clan, and we make that association. It's just like someone from Ireland coming here telling us they're Irish. Well, they come from a country where they've actually set foot on the land generations ago, but they're here now with us. They call this home now, but for us, it's always been home. And that's what we need them to understand. If we do something to hurt our land, hurt our future, hurt our culture, where do we get to go? We don't get to go anywhere. We are home. 
So it's our duty to look after what we have. Home is home. With us, language is the connection to everything. Like everything that we have on our territory, every portion of our culture is spoken about in our language. Right now, we have a bit of a decline in our language speakers, but we're uplifting it by teaching the young ones, bringing it into kindergarten, the preschool, the schools itself, having the elders speak it to them. When we do our culture camps, when they're on the land, they refer to what is on hand, whether it be a cup, a spoon, a bowl, a plant, the land, the water, they refer to it in our language, and then it becomes second nature. I can use my grandmother as an example, English, was foreign to her. It was always with Sotan. So when we grew up around her, that's all we heard. So we understand it. Not as fluent speakers as we were at one time because of the influence of other languages, but it amazes me that there are so many people willing to give their time to make sure we don't forget because your language is who you are. positive outlook. You can't have somebody come on your territory, again I always refer to either industry or elected government, saying that this is going to happen without your permission. And you got to be positive in the fact that a lot of these things are proposed, that doesn't mean they're guaranteed to happen. You have to look at what is guaranteed. Land is guaranteed, freedom is guaranteed, if you look after it properly. What I think the future for the Wet'suwet'en is, is we're so lucky that our feasting system, our culture is strong. We have a hereditary system, we rely on it. Even though there are influences of elected governments coming in, the fact is we know who we are, we know what to depend on, and we have our elders to guide us along the way. With us, uh, with Sotan, we have 22,000 square kilometers of unceded territory. And in that aspect, we've never ceded or surrendered any of that land. We've never signed a treaty. We've never given away any authority. The authority still lies with us. With uh, the province of British Columbia, they have a, an assumed and presumed authority, but we've never given that authority away. December 11th, 1997, when the judgment for the Dalgamoka Stayweight court case came down, it actually said that we exist and that we have oral stories that must be listened to us. That is the connection of land. When they use a date of 1846, saying pre-1846, post-1846, to us that's just a number. Our history is thousands of years old. You've got to realize with the Wet'suwet'en, we've probably been European contact a little over 150 years. We're one of the last First Nations that had contact because we protected our boundaries so well. Not even our neighboring nations were allowed in. We had severe laws. They could go on a hunting trip and it would only be one way if they didn't follow our laws. <laughs> Discussions, teaching, education, all of that, it all has to be shared. My educational background, as with most of the people of my generation, comes from the, the school systems that we have, from elementary, high school, college, university, but they're finally starting to realize that we have a history too and it needs to be shared. I'm very pleased with Smithers. We have a shared history project where we're acknowledging the fact that we as First Nations were here. We did work together. We continue to work together and we have to educate the next generation that moving forward has to be together. But we'll never forget that we're what's old. Um, we as Tsai, we're going to host a feast and what we do is we wear our regalia and I carry my talking stick and we go to the chief's houses 
from the, the Gitsan to the other side of Burns Lake. And we invite the chiefs and we ask them to come witness our business on this date. The business we'll be dealing with, we'll describe it. What they'll do is they'll um, give, give us money and it's called giving of the feathers to us. It's like a promissory note, they'll be there. So what we do is we take that and on the day of the feast, we return the feathers, that money, the feathers, and with interest. And it's to honor them that they came, made the effort, be with us to witness our business, and we respond with a thank you. We'll dance to their clan songs and return the envelopes with money and interest on top. It's a promissory note that they will be there to witness our business, make sure our business is strong, it's pure, it's done properly, no shortcuts. And they will stand, their chief will stand at the end of the feast and acknowledge whether the business was done right or not. But that's the returning of the feathers. Before the time of uh, vehicles, they to do the invitations to the big feasts, we have a feasting season because uh, our territory is in the wintertime, you're out trapping, hunting. In summertime, you come to the fishing villages. And generally, when you're back in the villages in the fall, that's when all the feasts would happen, whether it be a funeral feast, a naming feast, a baby feast, a marriage feast, all of the feasting would happen. But they would send out runners to each of the villages to invite the chiefs, and it would take weeks upon weeks. At that time, they would give you food to ensure that you made it home safely. That would be the same as us giving money now, mm -hmm. and it's to make sure that you make it home safely, and that's the promise that they'll be there to witness the business, the same as today. But we've changed it from the food aspect. We still do that. When this past one that we did, um, we received smoked fish, we received moose meat, we received berries, and that's to ensure that we were fed well so we could go home to make sure we're strong, to make sure our business is done right. It's all about caring. It's all about sharing. But when they do that, it shows us that they're looking after their territory and their family and their houses properly because they have enough to share with us. It's about looking after each other, but making sure you show that you are doing your job too. It's who we are. I can't be anything else except Wet'suwet'en. I have to be Wet'suwet'en. We're matrilineal. I follow my mother. And all through the generations before me, they were Wet'suwet'en since time immemorial. And that's who we will be. We will remain Wet'suwet'en. We are one of the strongest, I believe, in our cultural society, our feasting system, our naming system, because we are responsible to each other, the land, the people, not only the Wet'suwet'en, but everybody on our territory. We have to do that sharing. We have to do that education. We have to know who each other are. We didn't just walk in the door yesterday because I said hello to you. We were here for thousands of years.